All right, so welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we're going to talk to you guys about the Europa League and Conference League games, guys. Sorry I couldn't do a live stream earlier today, guys. I was busy at a event at my university, so that's the reason why I couldn't have done this. So it was a very, very important event. Of course, I couldn't have missed it. So that's why the stream did not happen. And instead, I'm making it up to you guys doing a video reaction. So this will be hopefully be around 15 to 20 minutes-ish. We're going to break this whole thing down, guys, the Europa League, because some crazy results happened that I did not ex anticipate. So remember guys to like and subscribe if you're new on here. And we're going to get started. So let's start with the Europa League first. So, Europa League. Let's start with Group A. So Group A we have here is West Ham 1, TSC 0. I believe West Ham scored a late winner. I think Suchek scored a late winner for West Ham, which means West Ham is through to the round of 16. Um, they are guaranteed to progress. And then Freiburg destroyed Olympiacos 5 0. I believe one person scored a hat-trick. I think it was Gresrick. Now, uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing his name right. Let me actually just make sure I get the name right. Um, I think he scored a hat-trick. Let me just check right here in the Sofa score. Um, right here. Yeah, yeah. The goal scores. Who scored the goals? Yeah, Gregorist. The guy scored a hat-trick. He's definitely been one of Freiburg's best players. And they also advanced through to the round of 16 as well. So, shout-out to them and shout-out to them. So, it's going to come down for this group. It's in between who's going to get that toss well between Freiburg West Ham. Freiburg is currently on top, though. As things stand, West Ham is second place. I believe Freiburg West Ham play in the final match day. Yep, they do. It's in London. And you would, pr you know, it's going to be an interesting ma battle for that second place, for that top spot. And as for second place, I think it's pretty much over for TSC. TSC, for them to get any sort of amazing result, they have to beat Olympiacos. And not just beat them. They have to do it by a good score. I think Olympiacos, let's see. The last time Olympiacos played against TSC, it was a draw. So, if, if. Basically, it, it's a setup for TSC, man. If TSC can beat Olympiacos on the road, they will come through in third place and get the conference six spot. But let's be real, the chance of that happening is very slim. It's very, very unlikely. So that's how Group A is turning out to be, which was pretty interesting, man. Pretty, pretty interesting. Let's move on to Group B, man. Let's move on to Group B here. So we have Group B here, guys. I'm using a Sofa score, by the way, because I think this is better than Foot Mob. Um, Brighton. Brighton got a 1-0 win over AK Athens. Looking at the stats here, Brighton didn't really play the best game. AK Athens were better than them for most of the game, but I think the red card and the penalty decision changed the entire game. And Athens, I, you gotta say, man, Brighton, man, they, they rolled their luck. They got revenge for what happened on match day one. And I think for Brighton, they're through. They, are, they advanced to the round of 16. Let's see if they can top the group. And then for Marseille, man, they defeated Ajax in a thrill of a game. I mean, that was insane. Obama scoring a hat-trick there. Ajax coming from behind. Like, it was a crazy end-to-end -end game. Ajax also went down to 10, man. Why do Ajax keep going down to 10, man? It feels like they, they need to improve upon their disciplinary. And so, that's how it ends right here. So, basically, Marseille and Brighton progress to the next stage. And we're going to come down to match day 6 to determine the top spot. Because I think Brighton plays against Marseille. Brighton plays at Marseille at home. So, that's going to be interesting. Because Marseille just needs a draw to advance to directly top. Whereas Brighton just needs to win. If Brighton wins, they're through. And Ajax, Athens. Ajax have to win that game. If Ajax don't win that game, they're going to finish bottom with no European football. And if Athens get at least a draw, they will have conference league action. So this is how the group of death is panning out to be. And we should have a very... That final match is going to be interesting for those uh, for the um, spots on the line. Because it's going to be interesting, man. It's going to be interesting. So Marseille and Brighton progress moving on to group c guys wow um spar product they made a huge upset over uh batiste kind of a shock result there did not see that coming and so that's a good good result for them good win for them at home as for batiste it's not really good for them they're still top of the group though that's great for them although batiste still let's see who, who did batiste play in the final match today? they play rangers at home so that's really set up nicely for them so for batiste man not very good and Rangers, man, they couldn't take advantage of the missed opportunity that Batista presented them. Rangers tied at home against Erez Limazol, which is really disappointing considering, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think Erez Limazol got a draw against them in the reverse fixture. Oh, yeah, no, I forgot Erez Limazol defeated Rangers. Wow, this is interesting, man. So this is how it's interesting because this group has got a lot more interesting than I thought it would be because I thought this group would be wrapped up today. Instead, no, the only team that is certain that's going to be out is Erez Limazol. They are going to finish... They will not be able to progress the next stage. And it's a, basically a battle for that um, for the qualification because on match day six, um, it's going to come down to Batiste versus Rangers. And if Batiste win, they officially top the group. If Rangers get a draw... See, if Rangers get a draw, because Rangers did defeat Batiste in the reverse fixture, I believe. 
So Raiders would actually top the group then in that case. No, 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 sorry. Because Batiste would be on 10, Rangers be on 9. So basically, Rangers have to win that game. Rangers basically have to win the game at the top. And the Ares Lamazol versus Sparapra. Now, Ares Lamazol could still advance against Sparapra because they do have the final game at home. And Sparapra versus Ares, that was a, um, that was a match they won. And Sparapra won 3 2. So Ares Lamazol, if they win that game by 2 0, they will advance. So even Ares Lamazol have a chance. So this group is interesting, guys. I like Group C. I think. We have a very nice final match day ahead of us, and I'm really looking forward to see how my, you know, the final match day goes here. Group D. Group D, guys. So, Group D, we have Atalanta 1, Sporting 1. That ended a draw with this win. Atalanta um, progressed from the group stage. They also officially topped the group as well because Atalanta have a better head-to-head -head than Sporting. As for Sporting, um, they're through to the next round as well. Uh, in second place and now it's going to come down to for that third place between Stromgras and Rocco and Rocco actually got revenge against Stromgras after they lost at home against them so Strom so it's going to come down to match day six where basically um Sporting will already play against Stromgras and Sporting have nothing to really play for Rocco are playing against Atalanta so it's interesting because I would say Rocco are probably in a better position here because they're at home against Atalanta that being said though Atalanta Sporting have really nothing to play for. So it's going to be interesting to see who gets a sec third place between Storm Glass and Rocco because it's going to be a very end-to-end -end battle for that third place. Moving on to Group E, Liverpool. They got the job done against LESK. They officially qualify to the next stage. They also officially topped the group as well, which is great. You know, they had a shock loss to, to lose at the very last minute. Well, they had a disallowed goal at the very last minute. So very, very interesting there. And for Liverpool, man, it's looking good for them. It's looking good for them. As for LASK, they're pretty much... They're effectively out, I believe. Yeah, yeah, they're effectively out because Toulouse will have... Yeah, yeah. So basically, it's going to come down for that Europa Conference 6 spot because I believe Toulouse have advanced with that draw against Union SG. And now, so who's going to get that um, third place between Union SG and um, uh, LASK? Because now, both of them are at home, which is interesting. They're playing against Liverpool. They're not going to play for Toulouse, so... I, I really would like to see USG get it done. They you know they just need a draw, I believe. And even with the loss, they could still progress. Assuming that LASK don't win, of course. And both games will, of course, take place at the same time. So I'm going to be interested to see how that final match day pans out for both teams. But yeah, shout out to um, the report to lose for getting the job done, man. Getting the job done. All right, moving on to Group F we have here is Renz. They defeated Makeba Haifa 3-0 on the road. Um, that's a big, big win for them. So they did it. They also, I believe, they qualified to the next stage. They also topped the well. No, no, I can't say they topped the group because remember, Villarreal do have a game in hand, and Makaba Haifa also have a game in hand as well. That's going to take place, I believe, December sixth. I believe. So we're going to see how that pans out, you guys. I think it's match day three. Yeah, match day three. It's going to take place December sixth, I believe. Yeah, December sixth. So one thing's for sure, um, Rens do progress. Rens do progress to the next stage. There is no way they get grouped. And it's just a matter of who's going to get that toss swap between Renz and Villarreal. Because let's be real, Villarreal should probably beat Makeba Haifa at home. And if Makeba Haifa lose that game, which I expect them to, they will officially finish bottom, I think? Or can they still get third? Let's make the assumption that they lose, right? Makeba Haifa, they come down the final match against Panet de Kainos. Which basically, yeah, they have to basically win away, which is going to be very difficult. So, and it's actually very interesting. Renz and Villarreal play against each other on final match day, so that'll be a good battle for the toss but i believe that was a i think Rens won that fixture if i'm not mistaken no villarreal won villarreal won one nil at home so assuming a villarreal do beat my cabal haifa it will come down to the final match day where basically uh Rens have to get Rens have to win if Rens win they will officially top the group so it's gonna be interesting to see what happens indeed all right moving on to group g man so this one is interesting man so slavia Prague got the job done against sheriff jerusalem on the road three two win as for Roma, man, they slipped. They slipped big time. They drew, drew against Servet. So now it puts Roma in a very tricky position because Sheriff Teresa is out. They're out. Servet's going to get conference league. It's just a matter of who's going to get that top spot. Slavia Pro and Roma. And we're in the top spot. It gets to skip past the Champions League teams. And on the final match day, Roma play against Sheriff. So Roma have to win. And Slavia Pro against Servet. So they got to hope that they got to hope that Servet do them a favor because. If Slavia win, it's over, man. It's over because Roma have less wins. So, Roma, man, it's going to be difficult for them. Difficult for them. Indeed, indeed. Moving on to Group H. We have here, it is um this group. Now, Leverkusen have officially topped the group. It's done and dusted. 
And Mold actually gets tie they tie home against quarterback. So that's actually puts them in a very interesting position. Obviously, Hotkin is eliminated. I'm only gonna play for zero points. An absolute disgrace. That's absolutely disgraceful for Sweden in particular. Um, so Hotkin have been awful. And it comes down to match day six where Leverkusen will play against Mold. Now keep in mind Leverkusen have nothing to play for. Mold have everything to play for, and quarterback play against Hotkin at home. So it's a very interesting position that this one's gonna pan out because you know Mold and Quarterback are gonna battle it out for that. Obviously, the um, second place in the group, so that's going to be interesting. So that's your Europa League roundoff, guys, uh, for you guys. So let's go ahead and move on to the Conference League, Conference League time. So let me get my timestamp right here. Timestamp right here, guys. So let's go ahead and move on to the Conference League. Where is the Conference League right here? Okay, so Conference League. So Conference League time, this is how the Group A pans out. So with this win, guys... That Slovian Batista Blake got on the road against Classic. They officially qualify. Lille also qualify as well. And it's just a matter who's going to get that top spot between Lille and Slovian Batista Classic and Olympia are eliminated. And it's going to come down to that final match where Lille is playing against Classic and Slovian Batista is playing against Olympia. So it's interesting. Both teams have the games at home. And so basically, um, Lille should be the favorites, man. They, they should be the favorites. As long as they win, there's nothing that Slovian Batista they can do to, to topple them. Moving on to Group B, we have Ghent. Um, Ghent, they also they defeated Zora Linus comprehensively 4-1. And I believe Baku Tel Aviv won the early kickoff game very early. They defeated Bristol Bay 2-1 on the road. And then they had a game postponed that did take place, I think, on Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yeah, Saturday took place, and Baku Tel Aviv won the thriller against Zora Linus. And now it's going to come down to who's going to get that toss ball between Ghent and Baku Tel Aviv. Now, where's the final match to take place? It's in Baku Tel Aviv. <laughs> Hey, that's actually interesting. That's actually interesting because if Maccabi Tel Aviv actually win that game, Ghent actually gets, they don't get that top spot. So it's going to be interesting to see how that one pans out. Ghent just needs a draw that will put them through. And yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that final match day goes in Group B. Uh, moving on, Group C we have here is Victoria Pleasant. Got the win 1-0 over Balkani on the road. So, so good for them. Dinamo Zyka recover and beat Astana 2-0 on the road. So meaning that Victoria Pleasant have basically qualified. They're going to top the group. And uh, man, five wins out of five is pretty good. And for Dinamo Zagreb, man, it's coming down to the final match day where they're going to be playing against Balkani. And where basically if they win that game, they will progress. They, they just need a draw. They, basically, as long as they don't lose, they'll be through to the next round. And as for Astana, they have to basically beat Victoria Pleasant on the road. And if they beat them, there is a chance. So that second place battle could be interesting for that. It's going to be very interesting to see how what that take place there. And then Group D we got here is Club Rouge destroyed Besiktas 5-0 on the road. And I have to do a massive apology to Club Rouge because I underestimated them big time. I predicted a draw. And it just shows you guys Besiktas is garbage. Besiktas has been horrible, guys. Their management has been officially a joke. They've been so bad. They haven't won a single game at home. And I'm just disappointed with Besiktas, man. Like, this is ridiculous, man. This is your home stadium. And you're putting that kind of performance at home is absolutely embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing. I need, we need to induct this. We this this club. I I don't want to see them back in Europe. Like this is disgraceful. What like this is absolutely shambolic. Very very disgraceful. And we got to give a lot of praise to Club Rouge because I believe they didn't even use their best team. I think Vanica didn't even play. Who's like one of the most integral players. So it just shows you guys. Besiktas just a joke. And the Bodo Glimp won the um they smashed Lugano five two. So it's gonna come down to that top spot between. Uh, Bodo Glenn versus a Club Bruges. And basically, if Club Bruges gets a draw, they'll be through. And obviously, Lugano and Besiktas is a dead rubber. It really has no meaning. Besiktas better recover, though. So that one. That round of group, five, group E we have here is an AZ Alkmaar defeated Zerniski. They got revenge for what happened on match day one, I believe. So that's good for them. Aston Villa defeated Legia Warsaw 2-1. And now it's going to come down for that top spot. Because I think Aston Villa have qualified. And it's going to come down to who's going to get that second place between... Aston Villa uh, for this one. And then obviously Zinerski have finished bottom. So Legere Warsaw is going to be playing against AZ Alkmaar. AZ Alkmaar needs to win that game on the road. And Zinerski is playing against Aston Villa. That Zinerski are pretty much out. So it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out, guys. Top spots also at the line here. Um, Aston Villa have been mathematically clinched, it, I, be I don't believe. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how what happens here. And the Group F, guys. Wow, Fiorentina defeated the gang 2-1 at home. They had to do a comeback in this game, I believe. So Fiorentina is in a good position. Kukrachi versus Ferenc Varus. Ferenc Varus won 2-1 on the road. So Fiorentina is through to the next stage, I believe. Yeah, they're through to the next stage. And it's going to come down to that 
It's going to come down to the final match today where Franz Vargas playing against Fiorentina. It was long as Fiorentina. Fiorentina, they're in a good position, man. Um, Franz Vargas, though, they need to win that game. And Genghis playing against Kukurachi at home. So it's going to be interesting because both Fiorentina and Franz Vargas are obviously undefeated both. So it's very interesting how the situation is panning out to be. The Group G, guys, we got here is HK2, Aberdeen 2. HK surrender a 2-0 lead against Aberdeen. Effectively knock them out of European football. So... Disappointing there um, and that Frankfurt lost at home to Pauk. I mean Frankfurt is not the same team as they used to be and Frankfurt have officially um, Come in second place. They can no longer top the group and Pauk is actually gonna top the group Which is interesting because I'll be really honest with you guys Frankfurt have fallen off ever since they won the Europa League This team is going down downhill. So not really been impressed with Frankfurt whatsoever And they even went down to 10 men at home. So shout out to Pauk man. Shout out to Pauk Because I believe they did the double over Frankfurt yeah, yeah, they did the double over Frankfurt, which is actually impressive achievement in itself. So, yeah, Frankfurt still progressed, though, in second place, but yeah. At uh, the Group H, wow! I cannot believe this happened. Norchelon defeated Ferenbache 6 watt. Who could have seen that coming? This is one of the craziest and most shocking results I have seen in my entire Conference League existence. I don't know how the heck this happened. So please, anyone that watched Baron Bocce, please let me know what happened in the comments below because that was a demolition. That was utter demolition. And with this loss, guys, Baron Bocce is second or third in the group. In fact, they're actually in a minus goal difference now with that heavy drummery. Ludogratz get the job against Sparta Trinova. So Norchland now advance. It's going to come down to... Yeah, I think Norchland have advanced. Yeah, they have advanced. Right? Actually, let me check. So, Norchland played against Ludogretz. Okay, if Ludogretz win, 12, 10, if I'm about to say 12. Oh, no. Not just yet. Not just yet. One thing is for sure, Sparta Trinavi will finish last. That's for sure. And now it's going to come down to between that, for that, for that um, spot. Because Ludogretz is playing against Norchland at home. If Ludogretz win, they put themselves 12 points. And I think that should advance that. Ferenbach is playing against Sparta Trinavi. Ferenbach should... I think Verenbach is still safe because that's pretty well. They should be beating Sparta Trinave at home considering they're already eliminated. And so, but now it's going to be interesting for that top spot because Verenbach is a little Goretz, man. Um, and Norchland, man. It's going to be close. So, what's the head to head between Verenbach and Ludogorets? Oh, wow. It's 2 0 to Ludogorets. And then Verenbach. Um, Verenbach and Ludogorets. 3 1. So, it's even. It's even. So, it's going to come down to goal scored. So. It's going to be interesting to see how that group ends because I'm really interested to see how group H ends. So that's going to be it for today, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy the reaction to the Europa League and um, Conference League. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below, guys. Remember, guys, to like and subscribe. Comment below your thoughts, comment description below. And make sure you guys check out the other positive description below. Uh, turn on notification bell to be notified when I go live or upload a video. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. And consider becoming a member of the channel. Gags is a member of the videos, member streams. All right, peace out, guys.